This is a continuation of our discussion about National Building Code of the Philippines or what has been known as NBCP Part 2. Now, let us start on tackling Chapter 2 which talks about administration and enforcement. In this section, the administration and enforcement of the provisions of this code, including the imposition of penalties for administrative violations, thereof is hereby vested in the Secretary of Public Works, Transportation and Communications, herein after referred to as the Secretary. So, uh, the role of the Secretary is so crucial in this code and um, in this section it includes the technical staff the general power and functions of the secretary and the professional and technical assistance aside from that it has been emphasized as well that um, the building officials are the ones referred to as the designated um, officials by the secretary due to the exigencies of the service the secretary may designate incumbent public works district engineers city engineers and municipal engineers act as building officials in the respective um, areas of jurisdiction that is why in mostly cities or municipalities, the building official has its office in the city or municipal engineering and they are the one designated for the approval or disapproval of the building permit that you are going to get when you do a construction of a certain building. To identify the qualifications of the building officials, it has been um, stated in section 206 of this code that a building official should possess the following qualifications like number one, a Filipino citizen and of good moral character. Number two, a duly registered architect or civil engineer. Number three, a member of good standing of a duly accredited organization of his profession for not less than two years. So for civil engineer, um, he should be a member of PIES or the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineer. For number four, has at least five years of diversified and professional experience in building design and construction in section 207 it talks about the duties of a building official i want you to read and check this section as who knows you might be the future building official in your municipality or um, city if you already knew what the duties of a building official right now then um, it could no longer be a hard task for you to perform your position in the future in section 208 it talks about fees always remember that all money involved here are subject to existing budgetary accounting and auditing rules and regulations in section 9 it talks about exemption so the only exemption for building permit fees are public buildings and traditional indigenous family dwelling in section 210 it talks about use of income from fees these are the fees mainly coming from uh, building permit applications and in section 211 it talks about implementing rules and regulations 212 administrative fines and section 213 penal provisions 
So the section 211, 212, and 213 emphasize that for any structure, construction, renovation, repair, demolition, or the like, you should always consult it with a building official in your area so you won't be penalized for not complying the rules and regulations of this code. Then in section 214, dangerous and ruinous buildings or structures has been um, tackled. Section 215, abatement or dangerous buildings. Section 216, other remedies. I want you to check the whole section or the whole chapter 2 so that um, you will know what are the specifications talked about in this chapter. So let us proceed to chapter 3, Permits and Inspection. This section or this chapter should be accomplished prior to doing any constructions or renovation of a structure. Um, it involves Section 301, Building Permits, 302, Application for Permits, 303, Processing of Building Permits, 304, Issuance of Building Permits, 305, Validity of Building Permits, 306, Non-Issuance, Suspension or Revocation of Building Permits, Section 307, Appeal, Section 308, Inspection and Supervision of Work. Section 309, Certificate of Occupancy. So basically, in your midterm exam, I will require you to do what a civil engineer should do in processing a building permit for a structure that they are constructing. Further instructions about it will just be posted soon. I want you to learn as early as now on how to process building permits as it is very basic for you to know how to do it so that it would be easier for you once you become a civil engineer someday. Chapter 4 Types of Construction It involves Section 401 Types of Construction 402 Changes in Types 403 requirements of type of construction so these are the considerations that you should check once you have a client asking you to build a certain structure that they want which means by then you should already know what type of construction you are dealing with as per the client's request chapter 5 um, it talks about requirements for fire zones. It involves section 501, the fire zones definition, section 502, buildings located in more than one fire zone, section 503, moved building, section 504, temporary buildings, section 505, center lines of streets, section 506, restrictions on existing buildings, Section 507, Designation of Fire Zones Each location has its own fire zone as designated by the secretary in charge of this code or you may refer it directly to the building official in your area. Chapter 6, Fire Resistive Requirements in Construction Section 601, Fire Resistive Rating Defined it means the degree to which a material can withstand fire as determined by generally recognized and accepted testing methods. And then section 602, fire resistive time period rating, section 603, fire resistive standards, section 604, fire resistive regulations. This applies on constructions that are exposed in heat or within the fire zone now let's go to chapter 7 the classification and general requirement of all buildings by use of occupancy this chapter applies when you will have a project soon before you do the plans 
you need to identify what occupancy your building is classified. In this section, it is discussed clearly in order for you to know the usage of the building. Now, in chapter 8, it talks about the light and ventilation. Have you ever considered how important the light and ventilation of a building? In this section, will be discussed the needed openings of a building, windows, required size of the rooms, ceiling heights, etc. And if you won't pass these requirements, then your design will be subject to disapproval by the building official. That is why you should know the certain standards under this chapter light and ventilation while you will be doing your plans dimensions for your building in chapter 9 it talks about sanitation this includes water supply system wastewater disposal system storm drainage pest and vermin control and noise pollution control so these factors are important to consider for the welfare of the occupants of the building and chapter 10 it talks about the building projection over public streets this will be tackled if your building involves balconies canopies and is near a public property like streets national road or public highway in chapter 11 protection of pedestrians during construction or demolition is tackled this is to avoid injury on pedestrians or people walking near the construction site caused by falling debris that is why you will see screens surrounding a building in construction to avoid injury towards the bypassers for our discussion in the National Building Code of the Philippines, part 2, we need to end here and then on the third and last part, it will talk about chapter 12 until chapter 21 and some important terms that is not common but you need to learn. See you in our discussion for the NBCP part 3.